So our next speaker is Khalid uh, Kwasegze. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing the name correctly, but uh, he's from Kuwait University and he's going to talk on Kovanov, on Kovanov homology of quasi-alternating links. So yeah, Khalid. Okay, thank you very much. So I would like uh, to take this opportunity first to thank the organizers for such a great conference and for inviting me to give a talk in this uh, uh, event. So uh, today my talk uh, will be on Kavanov homology of quasi-alternating links. This is actually a joint work, uh, recent work with Nafresh Pid. Okay, let me start first by given an outline of my talk. So my talk will consist of five sections. The first section, I will give just a, a very quick review and some background of the main terms that I'll be talking about in this talk. Uh, in section two, I'll be just given the main motivation of this work. Uh, in section three, I will, give an, I, I will be given the main theorem of this work. In section four, I'll be talking about some consequences and applications of this main theorem. And in the last section, I'll, I will just give the list of the references that has been used for this work. So uh, I would like to point out before I start that the, the main content of this talk will, uh, is based on this paper that has been uh, recently published in the Mediterranean Journal of Mathematics with the same title. Okay, let me start first by uh, reviewing uh, some the main terms and give some background before we start. So first, I would like to start by defining what I mean by quasi-alternating links. So the, the set of quasi-alternating links is the smallest set satisfying the following properties. So first of all, the n naught has to be an element in the set. Uh, second condition, if we have a link with a link diagram, which is called L in this definition, and this diagram has a crossing, which is called C, where both smoothings of this link diagram L at C, which are L0 and L1. What I mean by the smoothings, I mean, uh, this is the link L, and the smoothings of this uh, crossing diagram uh, sorry, of this link diagram at this crossing are L0 and L1. These are L0 and L1. So if both smoothings, L0 and L1, both of them lie in this set with the conditions that the determinant of L0 and the determinant of L1, both bigger than or equal to one, and the determinant of the link L is additive, that means that the determinant of L is equal to determinant of L0 plus the determinant of L1, then we say that the link L is a quasi-alternating link with a quasi-alternating diagram, which is the same diagram that we're talking about uh, at the cross and C. So when we say that we have a quasi-alternating uh, link, we have to determine the quasi-alternating diagram and we have to uh, also fix a uh, crossing that satisfies all these three conditions uh, for this link diagram. Okay, this is how we define uh, quasi-alternating links. The importance of studying quasi-alternating links because it, 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 it is a natural generalization of alternating links according to this remark, because any alternating link can be proven to be quasi-alternating at any crossing of any reduced alternating diagram. So uh, somehow, a quasi-alternating links is just uh, a generalization of the notion of alternating links. So what do we do? Uh, what is the main goal of this talk? The main goal of this talk is to try to study some properties of quasi-alternating links or try to generalize some properties of alternating links to the class of quasi-alternating links. There are many properties that hold for alternating links and can be generalized easily to the class of quasi-alternating links. Some of them are mentioned in this remark. I will be just focusing on number four, 
because this is the main, I mean, the, the, our main work in this talk will be uh, uh, focused on the Kovan homology. So for number four, we know for quasi-alternating links that the Kovan homology of any quasi-alternating link is homologically thin. What I mean by that, that the homology is supported in two diagonals. And this, is, this property was generalized from alternating to quasi-alternating links later. So the main idea of this talk will be uh, trying to look, uh, uh, take a deeper look at the structure of the Kovan homology of any quasi-alternating link. Why we are interested in taking a deeper look at the structure of the Kovan homology of quasi-alternating links because we want to, to, to have more properties of quasi-alternating links and at the same time have more obstructions for a link to be quasi-alternating. Okay, uh, I would like just to go quickly over Kovanov homology. I mean, uh, probably all of you know that Kovanov homology was first introduced by Kovanov in the, in the late 1990s. It, it is an oriented link invariant that is, I mean, the importance of this link invariant that it is considered as a categorification of the Jones polynomial. What I mean by that, that its Euler characteristic is equal uh, to the normalized Jones polynomial. This is the equation uh, uh, in the last line. So it's basically a bi-graded cohomology theory with rational coefficients. And we use uh, the notations that have been used for in uh, the, the many references. We use H upper I for the I homology of the complex uh, C of L. And uh, we know since it is a bi-graded, then each uh, differential grading, the H upper I can be decomposed as a direct sum of H upper I comma J, where J is called the quantum grade. So again, uh, Kovanov homology is bi-graded. So we have two gradings, I and J, differential and quantum gradings. Okay. There is another variant of Kovanov homology, which is called Lee homology. Basically, it's an, a variant of uh, Kovanov homology with the same complex, but with a different differential with the degree one comma four. It is known that the Lee homology is graded. So we have differential grading, but we don't have a quantum uh, grading for Lee homology. But in some cases, yes, uh, this Lee homology will be by grade. Uh, especially in the case when we have a homologically thin uh, or at least quasi-alternating link, the Lee homology will be by grade. So uh, the main results that we're going to be using about Lee homology can be uh, summarized in the following proposition, which is due to uh, Lee, the, uh, that if we have a link with cone components, then the dimension of the Lee homology will be two to power k, where k is the number of components. We can identify the generator of each uh, uh, of the homology in degree i according to this formula, which can be given in terms of the linking number between two different components of the same link uh, and take the cardinality and multiply by two. Uh, and uh, uh, number three, the, uh, if you have a thin, homologically thin uh, link, that means that the Kovana homology is supported in two diagonals, then we will have a spectral sequence converging to the Lee homology. What I mean by that, that we have a, a spectral sequence where the first page of that spectral sequence is basically the Kovana homology, and the second page of that spectral sequence is basically the Lee homology. So somehow, if you have a thin, uh, H-thin link, then it's very easy to, to come up with the Lee homology from the, from the Kovanov homology because it's the second page of the spectral sequence whose first page is the Kovanov homology. Okay. Uh, a simple way, I mean, uh, we, we are used, I mean, for people who are dealing with Kovanov homology, we, use, we usually use a table that looks like this, to describe the Kovanov homology, we just use integers at the i comma j position 
in the plane where i and j are integers. So for example, if you look at this table, this table represents the Kovanov homology of the trefoil, where we have uh, a Q uh, with, uh, uh, qu uh, with differential grading equal minus three and quantum grading equal to minus one. So this one means that the, 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 the homology uh, at this position is a Q. So we're using numbers just for the dimension over a Q for the Kovana homology at that position. The red entries here represent the Lee homology of this knot. The whole picture represents the Kovana homology for this knot. Okay. Uh, to, to introduce the motivation of this work, I need, I, I need some definitions before I uh, give you the motivation. So uh, the first definition, if we have a link, then we want to define what we mean by a gap in the differential grading or the quantum grid. So we said that the differential grading of the Kovana homology has a gap of length L, uh, S. If there are S consecutive columns of the Kovana homology, of the link with zero entries. The same thing for the quantum grading, but rather than using columns, we use using rows. So if you go back to the example that we had, here we have one column with empty entries. That means we have, uh, in, in the Kovana homology of the trefoil, we have a gap of length one because we have only one column with no entries or zero entries in that column. And at the same time, we have one row with zero entries. That means we have a gap in the quantum grading of length one. That's what we mean by gap. In the same way, we can define gap for polynomials. So when do we say that we have a gap in a polynomial? We have a gap of, a, of length S in some polynomial. If there are two monomials of degree I and degree I plus S plus one, of non-zero coefficients in that polynomial and all the monomials with degree between i plus one and i plus s have zero coefficients in that polynomial. So if you have monomials of zero coefficients, then that would give us a gap in that polynomial and the, the number of monomials of zero coefficients will give us the gap of length uh, equal to s. In the same way, we can define a gap between two different polynomials. We say that there is a gap between two different polynomials if their supports are disjoint and the minimal, a minimal degree of one of the two polynomials is bigger than the maximal degree of the second polynomial and there are S terms, S monomials in between that have zero coefficients. So it's like we have two disjoint supports and the, the monomials in between have zero coefficients in this polynomial and in this polynomial at the same time. Okay. So what is the motivation of this work? The motivation of this work are, are uh, these two theorems. The first theorem, which is due to Thistlewit in 1988, which says that if you have a Jones polynomial, of any alternating length, then this polynomial, uh, the, the Jones polynomial of, sorry, if the Jones polynomial of any uh, prime alternating length has a gap, then this length has to be two comma P torus length. In that case, we will have a gap of length one. So simply if you, the Jones polynomial of any alternating length has no gap, unless it is a two comma P torus length. And in that case, we have only one gap of length one. The second theorem, which is due to the work of many people, uh, which states, which can be derived from their work, that the breadth of the Jones polynomial of any alternating link is a lower bound of its determinant. So these two theorems basically are about alternating links. So the question, can we generalize these theorems to uh, quasi-alternating links? Well, the, the answer, will be given in this conjecture. So we think that, that if you can establish this conjecture, then yes, that will imply that the, the previous question has positive answer. So what is this conjecture? It says if the differential grading of the Kavanaugh homology of any prime uh, quasi-alternating link has a gap, 
then this link has to be two comma and torus length. So uh, we were, I mean, if you go back to the two theorems, we were talking about John's polynomial. Now we are shifting to the, 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 the uh, Kovanov homology. We can, I mean, according to this remark, we can prove that the existence of a gap in the differential grading of the Kovanov homology is equivalent to the existence of a gap in the Jones polynomial of the same length. So whether the, we're talking about this conjecture in terms of the Kovanov homology or the differential gradient of the Kovanov homology or the gap in the Jones polynomial, they are equivalent. So uh, why were we using uh, Kovanov homology in the Jones polynomial? Be because we were able to prove the, the, our main result uh, in terms of the Kovanov homology, not in terms of uh, the, uh, the Jones polynomial. We needed more structure. The Kovanov homology has more structure than, or more information than the Jones polynomial itself. Okay, so the main theorem, what is the main theorem of this talk or this work? We, we were able to prove that the length of any gap, so if you have a gap in the differential grading of the Kovanov homology of any quasi alternating length, then that gap will have length one. So we're not saying how many gaps do we have. We're just saying if you have gaps in the differential grading of the Kovanov homology of any quasi alternating length, then that gap would have length one. You can have more than one gap. I mean, we're not saying about anything about primeness. So th this link could be connected some of two, uh, of two lengths or two knots. So we're not saying anything about primeness. Actually, if you take like, uh, the connected sum of two half lengths, then you would have two gaps in the Kovanov homology. But we're, what we were saying that the length of each gap would be uh, would have to have length one. The the main idea of the proof. I'm not just I'm not going to go through the technical details of the proof, but I'm just going to just give a very a quick uh, idea how do we prove this fact. Basically, we use uh, induction on the determinant of the quasi-alternating length, and we use the, the, the long exact sequence in Kovana homology for the triple L, L0, L1. So basically, from the long exact sequence, we can say that the support of the Kovana homology of L is included in the support of the differential grading of L0 and the differential grading of the Kovana homology of L1. Uh, after doing the appropriate shift, because there is a shift in the long exact sequence. Anyway, so basically, if you want to compute the Kovana homology of the link L, you can just compute it from the Kovana homology of L0 and L1. This is basically the, the uh, main idea of this remark. So uh, uh, the first step, how do we prove this? I mean, this is the main idea. The remark gives the main idea, but this is the technical details. First of all, if you have a gap, if you have uh, the Kaufman polynomial, the Kaufman bracket of the uh, link L, which is A times the Kaufman bracket of L0 and uh, plus A inverse times the Kaufman bracket of L1. So if you have a gap between these two uh, um, polynomials, which constitute, uh, which uh, and uh, when you take their sum would give you the Kaufman bracket of L, if, if you have a gap between these two polynomials, then you would have a gap between the two different supports of the differential grading of L0 and L1. So if the two Kaufman brackets of L0 and L1 are disjoint, then the, the differential, uh, uh, differential uh, the, 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 the differential, differential support of LZ, uh, the Kovana homology of L0 and L1 are disjoint, and this is basically the main idea. So how do you compute the Kovana homology in this case? You just take the disjoint direct sum of the Kovana homology of L0 and L1 after doing the appropriate shift. Uh, another tool that we needed for the proof I mean, we, we have, uh, okay, sorry, let me go back to this one. So the, this is the main tool. Uh, from this tool, we can uh, deduce that if, if the link L, 
or the link diagram L at the cross and C uh, consists of two different components, then uh, if, sorry, okay. Uh, if, the uh, uh, if the link L at the cross and C, uh, if the cross and C in the link L consists of the same of two arcs of the same component, then according to this corollary, uh, sorry, I'm confused now where I should start. Okay, uh, let me go to the proposition and I'll come back to this corollary. So if you have a link L and the cross and C, where C consists of two, comp uh, of two arcs of two different components, then we can prove that the gap of these two polynomials would have at most link seven. If I go back to the corollary, which is a corollary of the previous proposition, it says if you have the link in number of the link L is small L and the link in number of the li links L0 and L1 are L0 and L1, where L0 is not equal to L minus one or L1 is not equal to L minus one, then we can conclude that the link of uh, the length of the gap between these two polynomials have to be at most a three if there is a gap. So if you combine this with this, if you combine this corollary with this proposition, whether this cross line, sorry, I, I'm seeing red screen. I, I don't know what happened. Do you see my slides, please? Yes, we see. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so if you combine the, this corollary with this proposition, then whether this crossing consists of two, comp uh, of two arcs of different components or of the same component, then at most we will have a gap between the two factors, A times the Kaufman bracket of L0 and A inverse times the Kaufman bracket of L1, which are the two parts that their sum would give me the Kaufman bracket of L at most seven. <laughs> Sorry. So how do we prove the main theorem? Sorry. Okay. How do we prove the main theorem? Basically, we use induction on the determinant of the quasi-alternating link L. So if it is one, then we have the unknot. The unknot is clearly satisfies what we are claiming. Now, if, if we just apply induction, L0 and L1 have no gap of length bigger than one. Now, if we just take the, the Jones polynomial of L, it's, uh, or the Kaufman bracket of L, it's A times the Kaufman bracket of L0 plus A inverse times the Kaufman bracket of L1. If there is no gap of length bigger than one in the first polynomial, there is no gap between the, in, inside the polynomial A inverse times the Kaufman bracket of L1, and there is no gap bigger than one in between, then the whole polynomial would not have a gap bigger than one because these two polynomials will not cancel because uh, of this uh, the condition that the determinant is additive. So the, the, the Kaufman bracket of L0 is alternating, the Kaufman bracket of L1 is alternating, and the determinant is additive at the cross and C. So when we add these two polynomials, there will be no cancellation, and each one has no gap of length bigger than zero, and the gap between them is no bigger than one, then the whole gap, any gap in that polynomial will not have length bigger than one. This is basically a rough proof of the main result. Uh, uh, let me just go for two minutes, just give some applications, very quick applications on this main theorem. So one corollary, we can conclude that the FL is a quasi-alternating link, then the, the length of any gap in the Jones polynomial is one. So we're not gonna have a gap bigger than one in the Jones polynomial of any quasi-alternating length. Another corollary of this result that if you have a quasi-alternating link, then the determinant will be an upper bound of the ceiling of the breadth divided by two plus one. We were aiming to prove that the determinant is an upper bound of the breadth, but unfortunately there, there might be some gaps in between. So we cannot prove that the breadth is a lower bound of the determinant. We can just prove that the breadth divided by two and take the ceiling and add one would be a lower bound of the determinant. Uh, last thing, so uh, 
we can prove also that uh, the quantum grading of the, uh, of the Kovana homology of any quasi-alternating link, if it has a gap, then any gap would have length one. The last corollary, we can conclude also that the breadth of the Jones polynomial of the link L for any link is less than or equal to the breadth of the Jones polynomial of the Jones polynomial of the link L0 plus the breadth of the Jones polynomial of L1 plus 2. And in the case if the link L is alternating and connected, then we can prove that the crossing number of L less than or equal than the crossing number of L0 plus the crossing number of L1 plus 2. This is basically, I mean, this last result is a true only when the L is a reduced alternating connected link. The, 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 this fact follows from the fact that the crossing number is equal to the breadth of the Jones polynomial only in the case if the link is connected and alternate. This is basically the proof. I mean, I'm not gonna go uh, in the details of the proof. And this is the list of the references that we have used in, uh, for this work. And I would like to thank you for your patience and your listen. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a very nice presented talk. So are there questions? Oh, hello. Hello. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 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 thank you. Uh, may uh, I have one question? Uh, I, as I know, uh, there is a such uh, conjecture that all positive things has zero uh, uh, zero uh, of homology for uh, homology uh, homological degrading plus one. Uh, can you show? Uh, can you uh, can you apply your the result to show that, uh, show this conjecture. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, you you were talking about positive links. Yes. For I, positive I, link, always have zero Kovana homology for grading one. I as I know there is a, such a conjecture. As you uh, as the example three one not. Okay, so so uh, in that, you're saying for positive links the 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 the, the gap would have only length one. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I mean I I want to say is the homological degree one, the one is always zero for positive link. Uh, I'm not sure about positive links. I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked at that before, to be honest with you. I don't know if, uh, I mean, I will try to look at it, at it again, but uh, I've never tried to relate my work to uh, positive links, probably. I've never thought of that. Thank you for the idea. Uh, I will ask uh, uh, in chat, but okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I have one question. Uh, I have used this uh, Lee's theory, Lee's results, like for alternating knots, uh, this, uh, if you know Jones polynomial and you know the signature of the knot, uh, then you can find the ranks of the uh, Kovanov homology, and that's for alternating knots. Yes. So, uh, is it true for quasi alternating also, uh, something of this sort? Uh, I mean, I think in the, in the same paper that uh, I did talk about, we did, uh, I mean, we were, uh, what we needed uh, to take a better look at the structure of the Lee homology of quasi alternating links. And we were able to prove that uh, uh, actually, based on that result, we were able to prove the night move conjecture for quasi alternating links mm -hmm. as a generalization of the work of Lee for alternating links. 
-hmm. And I mean, to be more precise, the, the result that we got is, I mean, we used long exact sequence for Lee homology. We were able to prove that the Lee homology is gonna split in half on the two diagonals, mm -hmm. which is basically the same idea that we have also right. for alternating lengths. Right, right. And uh, do you have results for finding the torsion for uh, Kona homology for uh, quasi alternating because for alternating that kind of work is also done. Yes, yeah. I actually, last month I was looking at this kind of stuff, and I was, I mean, I start wondering. I mean, whether we have similar results for quasi alternating links. But yes, I, I was thinking of that. I haven't done anything so far, but I think, I mean. I, I am optimistic that we would obtain the same results using the long exact sequence. Because there is a lot of similarities. I mean, or the, 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 everything for Kobano homology can, can be generalized from alternating to quasi alternating. So we should be expecting to get the same results again. But again, I haven't done anything so far in, in that direction. So is there a diagrammatic way of representing quasi-alternating uh, knots or links? Like, see, about when you say alternating, you see it pic pictorially, but quasi-alternating yes. definition is like, it doesn't give you a picture in mind. Yes, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, as far as I know, I, there is no, a diagrammatic way to describe quasi-alternating links. And that's why it's, it's, it's not as easy as studying uh, alternating links. I mean, it's not easy to study alternating links, but at least if you end up with a diagram that is alternating, then you are there. But with the quasi-alternating links, you have to go through all the diagrams and you have to go all through the crossings and you have to check all the conditions. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe braid theoretically, maybe one could describe that uh, quasi alternating links look like that closure of this sort of braids something like that would be interesting because the definition is not that easy to use yes i agree with you i i yeah. think for uh, uh, a braid of index three uh, there is a classification for uh, i forgot uh, this classification is due to whom, but I think there is a classification for all quasi alternating uh, uh, quasi alternating lengths of bread index three. Mm -hmm. But as as far as I know, I, I don't think there is anything uh, with bread index bigger than three. All right, thank you. I won't take too much time. I think now, uh, yeah, let us thank the 